Greetings, greetings. Greetings and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, we are, what, it's April 21 and uh, it's a gorgeous day where I am. I am in Los Angeles, California. Hello, Serajan, how are you? Hi, Mark, I see you are somewhere around here. Today we're going to be talking about something that has come up over and over and I don't know if you will resonate with you or not, but um, so let's dive right into it. But before I go, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Lisa Bubari and uh, I am your expert hypnotherapist. My website is healwithin.com. If you want to get in, ask me any questions, you can do it on Facebook, you can contact me via my Facebook, and so on and so on. Today I want to talk to you about um, behaviors of some, pe uh, some people. So this has come up and it is how do we manage and not get upset when someone is doing the same thing over and over and it gets on my nerves? Actually, this was an email to me and I received it at seven o'clock this morning and I was responding to my client and I said, you know what? There is something that you must take ownership of and it is Knowing that someone has the same patterns over and over, they are doing the same behavior. They make a promise and they don't deliver or they're constantly late and you get agitated because they are late or when they are repeating the same problem and it's becoming very, uh, it's creating anxiety inside you. You must also take ownership of why you accept it. Does this make sense? Here's why. Because there's accountability. Let me give you an example. If we are to have a meeting and at, at a designated time and a place, and this person is late about 15 minutes, okay? So there was traffic, things happen, and they are late, right? If that same thing happens again at another time and we are supposed to meet either only the two of us or in a group, they are late for 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Now you have to realize, hey, this is this a habit of theirs? And if you continue having a relationship with this person and recognize they're always either late or they have an excuse or something, then there is a pattern. Now, you may speak about their pattern and say it's not appreciated, but you also have to recognize it's not about us to change that person after we talk about it and share that you may not uh, it's not an acceptable thing because you like, you are more of a timely person and that person has a choice. If the pattern continues, you recognize you cannot change the other person, but you can change you. And this can be with people we live with or have a relationship with. It can be our children or best friends. It doesn't matter. It can be at work or a personal. Now, the same thing goes because of being stuck at home for so many of us. We are getting to recognize others' patterns that may, we may not have seen before. Recognizing patterns is an awesome thing. But when it comes to a place of agitation and creating anxiety, you must also take ownership and see how you can change yourself. So it either does not affect you, phase you, or have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation 
understanding why it's not selling well with you and see if the other person agrees. And if they cannot make that change, what is it about the pattern that they have gotten into that is giving them a sense of, you know, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result is never going to happen. But we, those who do things in a pattern and are in a cycle of maze, they are in it because it gives them a sense of comfort. This is their comfort zone. And we cannot take someone out of their comfort zone. Maybe they are late because they have been conditioned and some uh, folks, some traditions, some, uh, you know, they call it, it's a part of my culture to be late which is a great excuse because they choose to be late for certain cultures and yet not other cultures. And that in itself is a mispattern. So it's not that it's their pattern, but they pick and choose when and how to be. Again, it comes to accountability and our choice. So what it's been said, there are clues that are given about set patterns and people. So there is a clue, there is a pattern, and there is a choice. The three C's. You recognize the clues, ding, ding, ding. You see the pattern continuing. And if you stay in it, then it's your choice. And that goes the same with trauma. The same goes with a negative relationship. And there is people who don't understand why would anyone stay in a bad relationship? Because for whatever reason, they are getting something out of it. You'd be surprised. Maybe they think this is the best I can do. Maybe they think, who else would want me? Maybe they think I see no way out. You know, as a clinical hypnotherapist specializing in anxiety and trauma, working with women to stand up for themselves and eradicating self-doubt so they can be more at peace. This has become a pattern I see that I am helping. So many hold on to their weight, they hold on to patterns because it does give them a sense of comfort. Maybe a warped comfort, but it's still a comfort. The one who smokes knows that smoking is not good for them. But the whole idea of smoking, it's a, I feel relaxed. And yet knowing that cigarette in itself, tobacco in itself, nicotine in itself is a stimulant, not a relaxant. Alcohol is a stimulant. And yet it's in our mind that we say, if I have a glass of wine, I feel so relaxed. So patterns are established to create a sense of comfort for the person who is doing it. Now, if the rippling effect is affecting you, then it is up to you to do something about your choices. It's not about them. And that is what I shared with my client at seven o'clock in the morning. And I said, you do have choices. Share with me and come out of the box of what choices can you make that this person and their behavior is not affecting you as much. The ball is in your court. The ball is in our court. So making choices and taking ownership of your choices is the most powerful thing that you can do for yourself. So, 
thank you. I am sitting here at home as you recognize nowadays everyone is doing their um, their connections, their coaching, their business, everything is on Zoom, everything is right here. So I got a call yesterday afternoon that the father is going to bring his daughter to me because of a lot of trauma. And trauma is something that after the initial effect, it may not show up until the rippling effect comes much later. And it can be weeks later, months later, even years later. Let me give you an example. Uh, about two years ago, I was working uh, for an anxiety, deep-rooted anxiety with a gentleman who shared with me in our sessions that he used to be a, uh, a veteran uh, from Vietnam. So he was in his 70s. And the thing that made he couldn't handle was, this is right around January, and he was sharing that when it comes to New Year's, when all this uh, celebrations are happening and everything, that's when he goes in the deepest depression. And it's not because of holiday blues, it's because of the noises and the family being happy, making noise and the kids being there and the noises and the fireworks and the guns because it triggered him to go all the way back to Nam when he was in his platoon and the firings and everything was happening. And the things he did when he was there, his friends, that he lost in his platoon and the shame he carried, the shame of what he did in some of the uh, farms and with other children and women and in the bars, that shame, the sounds, the shootings and everything still had what we call PTSD. So why am I bringing all this? Because things that trigger us is truly stored in our subconscious mind. So there's ways we can handle this. We can do it by numbing ourselves either with alcohol, smoke, uh, drugs, or pills. There is ways you can do talk therapy and talk it, express it, write it, sing it, and release it having a voice to release it. And you can also do deeper work by tapping into the subconscious level to understand where it came from. And because muscle has memory and our essence of who we are, cellular impact in our mind, in our body, we can go and shift what I call mindset reset that maybe buffers the sounds, the effects, and the patterns so that we can have a better goal, a better pattern, a healthier one. That's it. So when someone comes to a hypnotherapist, when they come to me and say, I want to erase that relationship in the past and I don't want anything to do with that relationship or that person, I say, we cannot erase anything from our subconscious mind because it is an experience that has been experienced. But what we can do is turn off the triggers or buffer the triggers so it does not affect you as loudly or as harshly so that you can begin to heal within. And that is what I do, helping by giving everyone an opportunity, a true opportunity 
to take ownership and shift patterns. And that, yes, hypnosis is one of the modules that I work with, stress management, the triggers, the tools and techniques is different. Breath work is another one. But truly what I do is I help them evoke what was. So understanding the patterns, the history of it, so that they can embrace what is the reality, what is happening right here, right now. How is it affecting me? And if it has, and I didn't recognize it, to recognize it so that we can evolve to the best version of who we are or who you are or who he and she is. Why? Because you matter. We matter. I matter. Eradicate, eradicating self-doubt, fears, and shame so that we can stand up and have a voice and knowing. <sighs> Times like this, when so many are in fear and fear is being added either from media or hearsay, or the effects that we see from people that we know. So many who are losing friends and family members and they can't be with them. This is another trauma. And for those who are young and they don't understand it, it affects them much more because they don't have the means to express. So let me see what questions I can answer. Hi, Edward John. Hi, Deb. Hello, Peter. Until the thing is a distant memory, no longer harmful. That's a, that's a great way of putting it. Hello, Sir Puhi. Hi, Alice John, how are you? Thank you all for being here. If there is anything that I said has made an impact or it's uh, resonating with you, please share with me. If you are here live, hashtag live, or show me with an emoji. And if it is a replay, by all means, please hashtag replay so I know. If you have any questions. Hi, Annette, how are you? Hi, Mariette. Thank you for being here. Harry is in the house. Hello, Harry. We've been talking about patterns that certain folks have and how can we take ownership and shift within ourselves instead of constantly complaining about other people's patterns and how trauma affects us to the core of who we are. So I... I am open for any questions and yes, I work with children from ages eight years old all the way to, um, I have a client who is 92 years old and I, uh, I still work with him once in a while, once a month he calls and we work through some difficulties. Uh, by all means, what questions can I answer? What is it that you have? Do you, have you experienced trauma in your life? And was it from a time that you were much younger and you still feel a rippling effect to this day? Or if you have experienced trauma, have you worked through it and healed? So those are my questions to you because anything you share here may be beneficial to someone else who's watching besides me sharing the expertise that I have. Here's something else. I shared it with a private group last night. The client, the new client who is bringing his daughter to me 
that is 14 years old had to change schools because another kid took um, pictures of her changing clothes in the locker room a year ago and started uh, bullying her with threatening her of exposing those pictures in the school and on social media with other kids. And that trauma had affected her so much that not only, not only she, she was traumatized, she came home and told her parents and everything and they went to the principal, they talked about it. But months and months of continuum of that, even though they expelled the child and then the child returned to school, traumatized her more, thinking that it's going to happen. And then she also had other friends push her. So that bullying, that trauma caused her to become more depressed, slack in her schoolwork, and this confident, happy child stopped being happy, was constantly agitated. On top of everything, she gained over 50 pounds. Now, a child at 14 gaining 50 pounds is a lot. So I am eager to help this young girl to stand up for herself by helping her become more confident and believing in herself by self-esteem. You see, self-esteem is the inner value. It's not the outer confidence that we show when we go outside being social. But believing in I matter. For her to know this from the inside and then start peeling all and shame and everything and having a voice to express it so we can tap into deeper level and for her to become happier and healthier. Hypnosis is something that taps deep rooted emotions, patterns, habits and behaviors because it affects into our cellular subconscious mind. And if you're, if this is the first time you're hearing about this, by all means, please pick up the book from uh, Bruce Lipton. You can also check um, Dr. Joe Dispenza. They are biologists, they are science-based doctors, PhDs, who have been writing about mindset reset and how working through hypnosis and hypnotherapy can make changes that help us be more effective and change patterns for the healthier way. Hello, Mariette. Hi, Greg John. Hi, Ruzan. Thank you for being here. And uh, if you have any questions about hypnosis, if there is anything I can uh, share and talk about, by all means, let me know. And hello, Yolanda. Thank you for being here. Good afternoon to you all. And, you know, this is all I have to say. Hello, Chad. So good to have you here. We've been talking about mindset reset and how hypnosis and hypnotherapy works in deeper um, aspects of us, especially with managing weight. It's not what we eat sometimes, it's what's eating at us that especially trauma, shame, fear, guilt, all that. So many store inside, we can exercise, we can eat, we can eat, not it and realize that no matter what we do, if we have that pit hole that it's still there, that's the part that is from the core and we have to heal. Hello, Caroline, how are you? 
And by all means, if you have any questions, I am open to answer any questions. Thank you for joining in. If you are here live, say live, show an emoji. And if you are watching this on a replay, hashtag replay, any questions, I get back to everyone within a few hours. I've got two other coaching calls right after this, but I will get back to every single question. I myself, I am now on a hit, uh, healthy being, um, a fit being uh, on a healthy thing because I have recognized one thing. I have stopped smoking through hypnotherapy. I've dropped weight through hypnotherapy. I do root canals through hypnotherapy. I've done surgery and say in shifting and making my body toned. If I want to be a leader and coach to you, I ought to be doing the same too for me. So with that, I see no questions. I, our time is up. We are at our half an hour moment, and I thank you, each and every one of you, for being here. So, for today, I want to say one thing. Make choices. You see clues. You see patterns. You make the choice. God bless you. And may the universal light surround you. Goodbye until next week. Bye-bye.